Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 15th of March 2021 and the time has just gone 11.06 GMT and it's been a fairly positive start to the European trading session. Uh, we've seen uh, small small gains being racked up on, uh, on the major stock markets in Europe. Um, it's essentially a continuation of the kind of overall positive mood that we've seen in stock markets uh, in the last few days. Uh, at the back end of last week, President Biden signed off on the US relief package worth $1.9 trillion, which includes stimulus checks of $1,400 US dollars. So Americans are going to be receiving those uh, um, quite quickly. That's added, that's been kind of the main driver of the uh, of of, uh, stock market, of stocks recently. Um, also um, adding to that is the kind of wider recovery story, the, 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 you know, the view that uh, countries around the world are rolling out the stimulus packages, ro rolling out their vaccine packages, rather vaccine packages. With that, there's a belief that, you know, we're edging towards economies opening up uh, at, in, in the next few weeks and months ahead of us. There's no kind of great rush of when that will happen, but it, it, the overall, the process is heading in the right direction. Uh, overnight, we had some, broadly speaking, well-received uh, economic indicators out of China. Um, the latest in industrial production figures and also retail sales figures uh, well, for the kind of combined two months of January and February uh, came in better. But well, not, not only did they show large growth, they also came in better than expected. Um, there was some mild disappointment in there. Uh, the fixed asset industry fixed asset investment rating was very strong, but it came in below, below expectations. But overall, it was well received. It, it can add to the overall recovery story. China had some pretty brutal and, and strict lockdowns, which really impacted the economy last year. But we're seeing a fairly decent recovery, in particular on the retail sales front, because even though the manufacturing sector, which some of it is state state owned or state influenced, that's at a rebound. Retail sales was notably weak or, or underperforming in comparison to other aspects of the economy. So people were questioning: Are people, you know, individuals in China not that not that uh, confident, and is that why they're not spending a whole lot? But the, the latest retail sales figures were were were, uh, were well received. So as always. What I'll do with my video, um, I'll run through um, the week ahead first of all, and then I go through the major markets, uh, indices, currencies, and commodities. So starting off on the weekend article, which can be found on our website under cmcmarkets.com, under insights, and then under latest news and analysis. So as I mentioned, we have the China, uh, the retail sales figures out of China were well received. Looking ahead to tomorrow, Greg's, uh, the well-known uh, baker, uh, famous for their sausage rolls, they have their, in, in the UK, they have their full year numbers coming out. US retail sales will also be posted tomorrow. And keep in mind, we had a very strong reading for the, for the January report. Uh, it, showed, um, it, came, it showed growth of 5.3%. At the very back end of 2020, there was a, a $900 billion stimulus package in the US. It seems that influenced the figure. People are gonna be wondering, what's the, what's the February reading going to look like? Are we gonna see a continuation of the optimism? by US, US uh, consumers. Uh, sticking with the American theme, we have the Federal Reserve have their announced their interest rate decision on Wednesday. No change to policy is expected. But we'll, what traders will be listening out for is what's, what, what, um, what, did the, what does the Federal Reserve make of the relatively high, or the move to the upside in US government bond deals? Um, the US 10-year yield is currently north of 1.63%. It has been moving higher recently. A rise in yields tends to be a, a tends to tends to mean that that the bond markets are factoring in higher growth and uh, inflation, and with that, that can lead to higher interest rates. But the Federal Reserve have got no intention of increasing rates anytime soon. But if bond yields continue to rise, it may force the Federal Reserve to look at altering their language sooner than anticipated. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, on speaking with the kind of central bank theme, the Bank of England had their interest rate decision on Thursday. No exchange, no change is expected there. It's likely that we're going to hear about how the the possibility, or, or it's likely we're going to hear that negative interest rates are a possibility, and the banks in the UK are preparing for it. But it seems it seems less likely, it seems reasonably unlikely that negative interest rates are going to be actually introduced. 
on uh, on Thursday. We have third quarter numbers coming off in FedEx. Uh, this is very much a kind of a, a delivery and logistics story. Uh, online shopping has absolutely boomed uh, in, in the past 12 months. With that, we've seen, um, particularly on the, on the kind of retail um, side of the business, we've, we've seen FedEx really do well because it's a delivery business. Uh, Nike, a uh, well-known well -known brand, they have their third quarter numbers coming out uh, on Thursday. Also on Thursday, Acado, one of the companies which did very well out of the, uh, out of the, kind of, out of the lockdowns, it saw a surge in, in activity. Um, the share price has been cooling though in, in recent weeks because traders have been kind of rotating out of stocks that uh, that did well during the lockdown, such as in this case the online delivery supermarket company. Um, but and they've been rotating back into stocks uh, in the kind of hospitality and retail sector, which I'll touch on in a second. Um, uh, Williams Sonoma uh, Sonoma have Q4 numbers coming out. Anything to do with the kind of household goods. Um, you know, uh, and, um, and furniture and whatnot has actually done quite well in the past year, just because because of lockdowns, people have been effectively forced to um, to, to stay indoors. But with that, they've been kind of sprucing up their own homes. Um, JD Weatherspoons, their share price, their their first half figures are coming out on, on, on Friday. The actual numbers themselves are are, are going to be probably most likely quite bleak, given um, the, the severe lockdown, given the how business has been restricted um, you know, back to be ground to a halt because of the lockdowns. But what people are going to be listening out for is how well financed the business is and how how much the gear, business is gearing up for the reopen. At some point in the next few weeks and months, we're going to have an easing of restrictions here in the UK. Pubs that up, up, up and beer gardens will be allowed to open up. And then um, in April, and then going forward from there, the, the plan is for England anyways, to, for, for, for the likes of pubs and restaurants to be operating restriction-free in late June. So people are going to be wondering how well set where the spoons are, are prepared for that. And I mentioned a moment ago, Ocado, did, Ocado share price has been drifting low recently because people have been rotating, um, some traders have been rotating away from uh, so, you know, so-called lockdown stocks, stocks that did well amid the tough restrictions. And whereas on the flip side, the likes of JD Weatherspoon share price and Greg share price have been performing relatively well recently because people are, are looking at the companies going, they stand to benefit, you know, three months, six months down the line when hopefully we, we are living in, in a restriction-free uh, economy. Uh, and lastly, on Friday, we have the UK public finances. So see that the debt, the massive amounts of debt have been racked up uh, because of the furlough scheme and all the various different uh, support schemes designed uh, to help the economy in this very challenging time. Uh, starting off with the FTSE 100, I did the big indices as I like to do. So the FTSE 100 hit a hit an, an, hit an 11 month high in January. It cooled uh, into early February, and since then it's been broadly been pushing higher. It's comfortably above this this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 6,656. While it holds holds above that metric, it's likely that the broader upper trend is going to continue. Should that be the case, we can then be looking at targeting the um, the highs that were posted in in early January at 6,957, and a move beyond that could put us on track up towards 7,000, big, the big psychological number. Uh, a move to the downside could find support from this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average that comes to play at 64, 64, 68. It's not too far away from the, the the lows of late february uh, and then if you go below that we can head back down toward this zone here the lows of early february just north of 6300 and even that metric also isn't too far away from the lows of isn't a million miles away from the lows of late november in around 6248 we've seen record highs in the dax recently which really kind of indicates just how positive sentiment is DAX is in quite a decent position. So the market, DAX, has racked up all-time highs recently. We're, we're comfortably above its 50-day moving average, well above that. If we continue to press on higher from here, because we're currently trading around 14,526, moves on higher up here. Our traders will be looking out for that the next big number will be 15,000. Should we see a move to the downside, we could head back down towards 14,100. We saw a bit of resistance in that general area on the way up. And even, to, even if you go below that, we could back, head back down towards 14,000 itself. And then below that, this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in at 13,985. And notice how it acted nicely as support uh, in early March. And if a metric has been of importance in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future. Um, turning our attention now to the Dow Jones, respecting you know a record, uh, a record, a new 
all-time high to be set on the Dow Jones uh, today. Once cash trading is underway, um, we're currently predicting it to open just south of 32,900. If we continue to move on higher from here, we could be looking at, at targeting 33,000. Uh, any move to the downside in, in, in the Dow Jones could take us back down towards 32,000, and the move below that could take us back down towards the lows of mid-February in around 31,000. 744 and below that we could be looking heading back down towards the 50 day moving average this blue line here uh, at 31,268 looking now over on the currency markets turning off euro dollar so it was only uh, only recently we saw euro dollar fall um last very recently we saw euro dollar fall to its lowest level since november but since then it has been moving higher and we can see here that we had a fairly decent move to the upside. It's turning over on itself yet again. So traders are going to be wondering, is this just a is this move to the upside just a, a rebound from the kind of the negative trend that's been in place since early January? Is the market going to turn over on itself yet again? If that is the case, is it going to head back down towards the lows of uh, the lows of last week in around the lows of last week in on one spot eighteen? 35, which isn't too far away from the kind of the 118 metric uh, in here. And also keep in mind the 200 moving average is, is in that zone as well, in at one spot 1832. So keep an eye for one spot 1835 down to around one spot 18. But keep in mind the overall trend for months and months has been very much to the upside. So we're also could be at a, at a crucial point. We could be at a point where if we do manage to move on higher from here and we take off the highs of last week, we could be looking at uh, retaking the 100-day moving average here in at one spot 2038. Notice how nicely it acted as support back in early February. A move beyond that could take us up towards the 50-day moving average in at one spot 2094. And if you get and notice how it, that acted as nicely as resistance uh, in the middle of February. So should we go beyond that metric, we can then be looking heading up towards uh, the late February highs in at one spot 2242. Looking now at the pound versus the US dollar. So the pound has held up far better than the euro against against the dollar, even though the dollar in recent months has been reasonably strong. So we had its highest level in you know over two and a half years, going on a three year high was set in um in late in late in late February. Since then we we've, we've had a move to the downside, but we are moving higher again. We're comfortably above this blue line here of the 50 day moving average in at one spot 37.93. While we hold above that metric, it's likely that the broader upward trend is going to continue. A move higher from here could see us back up towards one spot 40. North, going north of 140, we could then be looking heading towards the highs that were seen in late February, the multi-year highs of one spot 4241. Uh, if you do have a decent break below um, the 50 moving average, this blue line here, it could take us back down towards the 100 moving average. We can see you acted nicely as support back in early November. Um, the one really moving average comes in at one spot 35.46. And I'll come on to commodities now before we finish up. Starting off with the gold market. So we talk, mentioned a moment ago how, how, how broadly speaking the US dollar has uh, been relatively strong. Gold is trading US dollars. A stronger US dollar has put pressure on gold recently. Conversely, a weaker US dollar has given gold an assistance, a bounce. So it was only, uh, only last week we saw gold fall back to a level last seen. Uh, in June, so we're talking multi-month lows that were set there. We had a fairly bullish uh, candle uh, last Tuesday on the on the uh, on, on the ninth, but since then we've seen seen a bit of a wobble. We haven't we, we have we're well off the lows of last week. We haven't made huge progress to the upside. So while we hold above the lows of last week, it's likely we could see the market you know continue to rebound. We could be heading back up towards the 1760 area. Up beyond that could take us up towards 1800. And then beyond that again, could take us to this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in 1807. Once again, it acted nicely as resistance uh, in early February. If, on the other hand, the market does manage to turn over on itself again, we could be looking at retesting the lows of last week. And then below that, we could be looking heading back down towards 1670. Uh, and then if you head below that, we could then be looking head down towards 1600. And lastly, I'll come out of the oil market. Uh, Brent crude oil has been in decent decent shape recently. It ties in with the wider recovery story. If economies are going to be are going to be less restricted uh, in the uh, in the weeks and months ahead, the view is that 
the demand for oil is going to increase. On the flip side of that, you know, and, and also tying in with that, um, OPEC Plus have been keeping the output relatively restrained, and with that, that's also adding to the upward upward um, uh, the upward price action. So we we wasn't too long ago we we were at its highest level in well over a year on oil. It hasn't retested the recent highs, but it's still comfortably above. Uh, the, the low seen at the beginning of the month. If it continues to move on higher from here, we could be looking, at, you know, heading back up towards the high seen this day last week, and then a move beyond that could take us up towards 75 spot 71, uh, that the highest level that was seen, uh, level that, that was last seen in August, sorry, rather April 2019. Uh, any move to the downside in the oil market likely to find support back in around the kind of 65 zone down towards 62 spot 18. And even if you go below that, we could, we could then be looking at heading back down towards the 50 day moving average, this blue line here, which is just south of in around 60 spot 92. Uh, that's all from this week. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.